Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And this world is in spiritual darkness. I guess the opening verse of this series, this is the knowledge series, is Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people. Do you know the Bible says my people a whole bunch of times? I think it's hundreds of times. I'm going to, once I finish this series, I might do that on my people. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God. I will also forget thy children. Hmm. See, if we don't care enough to have knowledge to teach our children, why should the Lord care? I mean, he tells you everything we need to know is in the book, but if you won't bother to read the book. But this is going to be on economics in the Bible and how it applies to modern times. So, boy, I'll tell you what, I remember prices, some prices from when I was a kid. Uh, reason being, you know, when I was in high school, uh, my mother had a real bad car accident. Matter of fact, she, it was so bad, she should have died. Um, she actually got a write-up in the American Medical Journal back, oh, I don't know, maybe the late 60s or something like that but uh, of course she had a, a, a very competent team of doctors being sister worked at the hospital and the prayers of a young boy which uh, made some promises he didn't keep so <laughs> bible says uh when you when you make a promise don't be a fool not to keep it or well yeah Make sure you keep that promise. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but yeah, you get the idea. Now in Amos 3, 7, we read the following. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And... I do not claim to be a prophet in any way, shape, or form, but it seems as though uh, through studying and life experience and education, secular and biblical, that some secrets seem to be revealed. Of course, they're not really secrets. you know. Bible tells you uh, 666 is coming one day, you know, and it is my belief that the this whole Bitcoin thing is part of the plan. You know, they've been saying, oh, yeah, if you had bought Bitcoin, you'd be a billionaire right now. Of course, they say, oh, Bitcoin is bad because the banks and the government can't control it or, or track it or whatever, but I think they're behind the whole thing. And I think they're getting us ready, uh, prepared to accept digital currency where they'll be able to track and trace and control everything. Oh, that Chaplain Bob, did you hear what he said last night? Well, I'm, you know, they click a few buttons on a computer and next thing you know, Chaplain Bob goes to the grocery store and says, okay, here's my groceries. Uh, let, let's, you know, try to buy something. Oh, sorry, uh, your bank account's been locked. You can't buy nothing, 
big dog. So they're already doing that in China. You know, <laughs> they got a thing called a trial run, you know, and then they try to work out the bugs. And believe it or not, um, the whole reason they called debugging the computer, you know why that came to came about? Now, I was a computer science, uh, a business computer science major, okay? Uh, there was two branches of computer science when I was in college in the 80s. Yeah, we had Windows like 1.3 or something like that. Um, you had the scientific end, which is what people used for uh, meteorology and uh, engineering and those kind of things. Lots and lots of math. And I was a, when it came to math, I was a doofus. So that was not my field. And then they had business, where they would use the computers for databases, for inventory control, uh, accounting, uh, financial stuff. You know, that's what they were using computers for back then. So that was my field. So you had to take economics, you had to take accounting. You were basically had a business degree with an emphasis or a minor or major or whatever in computers. So, but the original computers were huge and they had tubes and they generated a lot of light. And then when they were working at night, the moths would come out and when they would open the door, the moths would get into the room and they would be drawn to the light. The tubes, well, yeah, believe it or not, before transistors were a big thing, they had tubes. Those of you that have enjoyed high-end uh, stereo equipment, you know about tubes. But when I was a kid, we had tubes in the televisions. And so the moths would go to the, the tubes where the light was, and then they would short out. So you had to actually pick the moth, the dead moth, off the tube, or replace the tube for the computer to work. So that's why they call it debugging. Yeah, that's why they called it debugging the computer. And the term actually stuck. More useless knowledge I learned in two years of college. Yeah. So what can I tell you? But like I say, I do not claim to be a prophet. A servant maybe, but yeah. All right, let's get going on this. All right, in Deuteronomy 29.29, the secret things, secret things, belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. See, economics is part of God's law. I mean, the Bible is, it's a book on how to run government. It really is. I mean, everything. And believe it or not, there was a time our Constitution was taken from the Bible. Believe it or not, a lot of things that were written in the Constitution were taken directly from the Bible. Of course, they'll tell you, well, yeah, you know, there was a couple of Christians here and there that, you know, founded this country, but, you know, most of them were just deists. Well, yeah, they believed in a God, but not necessarily Christians and blah, 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 whatever. Um, but guess what? The, um, on the Liberty Bell, the Liberty Bell, it had an inscription from the Bible. In the book of Leviticus 25.10, we read the following. Uh, they had a thing called the Jubilee. It was the 50th year. And if somebody had mortgaged their land or property or whatever, on the 50th year, they would get it back. Uh, that, what would that do to uh, 
the bankers and their repossessions, huh? Uh, that's why they don't want us to know about this. So let's read this. Leviticus 25.10 And ye shall hollow, hollow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. And proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. That is actually on the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia. They actually inscribe this word for word. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. Hmm. Can you imagine every 50 years uh, mortgages canceled? Oh, by the way, they're going to do a great reset. <laughs> the, the W uh, and the E and the F. Uh, but it's not going to be a jubilee. No, it's going to be more along the line of uh, slavery. But yeah, we'll see what happens there. Now, instead of me being a prophet, uh, this probably more applies. Luke 10.21 in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank thee, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Yeah, there, there, that's me. Revealed them unto babes, even so, Father, for so it seems good in thy sight. Now, there are people who tell you that scholars, scholars, people that know a lot more about the Bible than I do, that uh, will tell you that they believe Job is the first Bible uh, book in the Bible. And after looking at their research, I tend to agree. Um, so let's go to Job chapter 1 and find out what wealth is. Job 1.1. 1, 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. Well, yeah, of course he was uh, rich. I mean, look at his name, Job, right? He had a job. He was Job. And when you do a job, you get paid, right? Uh, I know, poor attempt at a joke. Uh, so whose name was Job? And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Eschewed means he hates and avoids evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters, ten kids. His substance, you know, the things that he owned, also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she-asses and a very great household, so, this, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. So here it is, you know, this guy's got a lot of animals. And of course, if you own animals, you can sell animals for, you know, whatever, gold, silver, whatever. And, uh, you obviously have to have property enough to be able to feed all these animals. Can you imagine 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels? I mean, <laughs> that's a lot of grassland, people. That's a lot of grassland. So he was very, very, I guess you could say wealthy. The Bible teaches that land, property, livestock, cattle. I mean, you know, if you have livestock, you could eat, right? Uh, there's two different types of cattle. They have what they call beef cattle, and then they have milk cattle. They're both cows, but, you know, they're raised for different things. I think um, I think it's Jersey cows and or Holsteins or uh, milk. 
Perhaps you've heard of that. So yeah, the Holstein and the uh, Jersey are American familiar milk cattle, dairy cattle, <clears throat> excuse me, dairy cattle. And then the beef cattle are uh, Hereford and uh, Brahmin and uh, yeah, a few others, I guess. And then in the U.S., you got the Texas Longhorn. And probably everybody's heard of the Black Angus, which is actually a restaurant, believe it or not. They have a restaurant called that. So, yeah, there's, you know, different uh, breeds, I guess you could say. You know, just like you got uh, Great Danes, German Shepherd Dogs, uh, Chihuahuas, which is one of my least favorite breeds. Uh, you know, Poodles. Golden Retrievers, which everybody loves Golden Retrievers if they like dogs. And, uh, you know, so there, there's different types of cattle. And if you have cattle, you got food, right? Milk, you can make cheese, you got beef. But now the government has made it so that you have to live in a certain area to be able to raise livestock. And then the government, for example, a farmer, I don't know about cattle, but I know farms. Do you know the government sets the price of uh, certain grain items like corn and wheat? The U.S. Department of Agriculture sets the price that you can sell your wheat. Now, you can go to a farmer's market and sell it directly, but then you got the county will come in, the health department, and say, well, uh, did you do this and do that? And do you have a, a uh, restaurant license and blah, blah, blah? You know, by the time you get done with it, uh, they, can, they can make a whole lot of problems for you. I mean, there's so much government regulation. And they'll, of course, they'll tell you it's for your protection. But, you know, is it really our protection or control? But can you imagine you're a farmer and you grow wheat or corn and the government tells you how much you can sell it for? I mean, and then they, they tax you. Between telling you what you can sell your stuff for and what your property and all the other stuff you know your tax they could put all of you out of business easy not without e very easy there used to be so many family farms back i don't know 150 year even 50 years ago they're gone family farms are gone it's it's terrible but in the bible Livestock, land, gold and silver were considered money, wealth, well, wealth. And um, so let's take a look at that. Now let's take a look at uh, Abraham, uh, the father of many nations, not just one little nation over in the Middle East. Father, you know, when you really look at it, churches turn the Bible into a lie. I mean, really, they do. Uh, you know, Abraham was to be the father of many nations. And they want you to think one little, one little nation is the fulfillment of all of God's promises. Uh, yeah, they are. But it's the fulfillment of the wheat and the tares. <laughs> Uh, the bundling of the tares to be burned. Yeah, the fulfillment of that prophecy. But they'll never tell you that. And that was uh, starting to be fulfilled in 48. Yeah. But that's another... I got a Bible study on tares if you're interested. Yeah. Genesis 13. 13 is not a good number, generally. You know, lucky 13, they say at the, um, the casino. 
Yeah, every time I went to the casino, it was to have uh, a, a very, very, very inexpensive meal. Because they used to give food away to get people in there to get them drunk and gamble all their money away like idiots. You know, you don't build a billion dollar casino giving away money. And we know who's in charge of that. Yeah. So, of course, the television will tell you it's uh, uh, the Italian, you know, the Italians are Sicilians, but uh, I know better. Did you know that Lucky Luciano was a member of the tribe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was. That's a gangster, by the way, for those of you that don't know it. Uh, let's see. Genesis 13, verse 1. And Abram, now Abram's name was changed to Abraham by the Lord. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had and Lot with him into the south. So, you know, Lot was his nephew. Verse 2, And Abram was very rich, very rich, in cattle, in silver, and in gold. So, what is wealth? Cattle and livestock, silver and gold. Now let's stop right here and talk about stuff. Do you know the definition of a dollar? The actual definition of a US dollar, the legal definition of a dollar is one ounce, one troy ounce. Uh, troy ounce is around 32 grams, whereas a regular ounce is like 28 grams. But a troy ounce is like 10% heavier or something like that. Um, approximately uh, but a dollar is one troy ounce of 90 percent silver do those little green pieces of paper with pictures of presidents on it that says one dollar are those dollars no they're not they say one dollar but they're not a dollar there's no silver when i was a kid a silver dollar would buy 20 candy bars. I mean, I remember that. I mean, I remember dad giving me a quarter with a, a guy with a cane on it. Those were the old silver quarters. And I could go to the school, buy a lunch and a milk and get back a nickel. And I would take that nickel and I'd run to 7-Eleven on the way home and buy a candy bar. Maybe a Snickers, you know? Yeah, I, I remember that. You know, I remember Grandma giving me a dollar for my birthday and going to Burger King. Oh, by the way, I, we lived in Miami. And uh, Burger King is actually, their headquarters was Miami. That's where they founded Burger King. And I always liked Burger King better than uh, McDonald's. Uh, the flame-broiled burgers, anyways. But I remember taking a dollar going to Burger King, buying a Whopper, a shake, and a fries, handing them the dollar and getting back a quarter, a silver quarter, and a silver dime. I was like, wow, that's seven candy bars. You know, that was money to me, candy bars, you know. Yeah. No wonder I got bad teeth. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. And believe it or not, uh, they took all the silver coins. They, they got rid of the silver coins after 1964. Well, we used to have $20 gold coins up until the 19, I think it was 1933 or 1934. $20 gold coin, which was one ounce of, I think, 90% gold, gold. And uh, FDR, President FDR, yeah, believe it or not, he was of the tribe. Uh, passed an executive order saying, you got to turn in all your gold coins and gold bullion. Of course, the uh, jewelry was exempted. And if you want to know who was behind that, uh, take a look at jewelry. The first three letters of jewelry 
and that was who was behind it yeah um but you would get an incredible fine i, I think it was like almost the fine was almost what you could buy a house for and five years in prison if you got caught with a gold coin so they took all the gold coins and uh you know can you imagine twenty dollars to buy a gold you know for a one ounce gold coin i think it was 90 percent gold i'm not sure you know take a look at it so let's take a look at uh the spot prices of silver and gold today i want to take a quick pause here all right silver is about uh as of april 6 according to monex.com um silver prices are 2466 $24.66 6 for one troy ounce um if you wanted to buy a kilo of silver it's us dollar 792 dollars and 82 cents so what is it in euros i don't know do the math um i live in the us so what can i tell you when i was in high school in the early 70s you could have bought a ounce of silver for about a dollar something or other you know under right you know maybe two dollars i remember that i remember an ounce of gold was 35 dollars when i was in high school i remember that because i knew somebody that bought gold and 35 dollars was about when i was working at a restaurant full time minimum wage basically after taxes i would make about 35 dollars a week i don't remember exactly what it was uh you know it might have been 37 39 dollars but i was you know making about a dollar 55 or something like that an hour so i was taking home you know 35 40 dollars a week and i could have bought an ounce of gold working a minimum wage job in an, in a restaurant back then so $35 an ounce approximately for gold back then today uh spot price for gold is $1927 gold price per kilo $61,953 five cents yeah you know what according to what the prices were when i was in high school and what i was making then and what i'm making now tied to the prices of silver and gold i was actually making more money in high school than now because I could have bought an ounce of gold, minimum wage job in high school in 72 or so, 1972. There's no way I make close to $2,000 a week now. And I'm actually was considered a semi-professional uh, job. So, you know, something changed. Uh one of my instructors absolutely hated uh in college not bible college but regular college when i was in business college taking economics and all this he absolutely hated and detested paper money he said paper money and inflation is a it's theft that's exactly what he said it's theft he says, every time the money supply doubles, your money is only worth half of what it was. That's why as a minimum wage job in high school, according to gold and silver prices, I was making more money in high school in a minimum wage job working in a restaurant than I am now. I mean, I would only make, you know, $500 a week uh, when I quit my job, approximately. To retire to do bible studies full-time 
well, close, you know, whatever. Um, but there's no way. I'm only making maybe a quarter of what I was making back then. I mean, think about it. Gold for 35 bucks a week's pay. Now gold would take me close to, I'd have to make close to $2,000 to be able to buy the same purchasing power with the dollar. Think about it. And same thing with, uh, yeah, the silver. Uh, when Clinton was president in the early mid-90s, uh, I was getting gold for, I mean, sorry, I'm sorry, silver, silver for $5 an ounce. And I bought uh, 20 pieces, 20 ounces of silver. Of course, my uh, stepmother, my dad's wife, uh, found it and it disappeared. So it's gone. Whatever. But now, 20 bucks. So, you know, when I was in Denver in the early to mid 90s, I actually went, I was able to buy a breakfast for a dollar. You know? Went to a uh, restaurant last night, had two dinners, and uh, it was like 30 something dollars. I mean, seriously, I, when I was in, I told you Burger King, a Whopper shake and a fries, 65 cents. Money supply, they keep, you know, when you're printing money, you're devaluing what it is. When I was in high school, you could buy a brand new Volkswagen Beetle, a bug. It was a uh, four-speed manual transmission, no air conditioning, very, very basic car, small. I had, I had bought one when I got out of the army, blue, baby blue, sky blue, whatever they called it. Very dependable, very dependable. I love that car, even though no air conditioning. Living in Florida in the summer with no air conditioning, ugh. But uh, I remember a Chevy Malibu or Impala. Uh, I mean, you, you could have bought that Volkswagen for around $2,000 new in high school, 73 or something like that. A Chevy Malibu was around $4,500. And a Cadillac you could have bought for, I don't know, I don't remember, but it was a lot more money. But it was well under $10,000. Uh, I remember uh, I was going to a private school before this, you know, years, few years, number of years before this, like middle school. And uh, the Baptist pastor, which I better not talk too bad about him because I actually did believe back then. And he had something to do with that. But uh, he was collecting money for the missionary overseas or wherever it was. I don't remember where. But uh, collected money, collected money. We were going around, you know, selling things, collecting money for the missionaries and what have you. And at the end of it all, he um, bought a Cadillac, brand new. I mean, that thing was probably... Probably six, seven thousand dollars back when you could have bought a brand new bug for two. Uh, really nice. It was one of the two most expensive models. I used to remember that. And I think it was my dad said something about, yeah, he was a missionary to the Cadillac dealer or something along those lines. Yeah. But uh, what was interesting was if you took a Cadillac and a Volkswagen. You know, the Cadillac was like three times what the Volkswagen cost. And in 10 years, the Volkswagen was held its value better than the Cadillac. A 10-year-old Cadillac and a 10-year Volkswagen, the Volkswagen costs more. <laughs> what, did that t what does that tell you? Yeah. So, let's go check a look at Abraham. All right, Genesis 13. And Abram 
went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich, very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel. Uh, Bethel, Beth means house, and El is has reference to God. Bethel actually means house of God, or God's house, believe it or not. So when you see that, you know Bethel. Unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai. Unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. So he had, you know, flocks, herds, cattle, silver, gold. Verse 6, and the land was not able to bear them. You know, they had so many animals that uh, they couldn't grow enough grass. You know, it was just too many animals. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife, you know, there was fighting between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled then in the land. Hmm. And Abram said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee. You know, let's, let's not be fighting amongst each other. I pray thee between me and thee and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. And if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. You know, you go your way, I'll go mine, so we can feed all our cattle. We don't have to live together, you know. We got, the whole land is right before us. Dude, take what you want. You go this way, I'll go the opposite. You know, let's not fight amongst ourselves. You know, Abraham had a good spirit about him. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Now remember, Lot went to Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of God, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Why is, you know, Egypt was the breadbasket of the Middle East because of the Nile River. Uh, when you got a river, you got food, you got crops. Uh, just like... Um, um uh, Ukraine is the breadbasket of Europe. Just like uh Nebraska and uh Kansas and Nebraska are our plain the in the plain states ha, are our breadbasket. And by the way, people, they're in severe drought. Oh yeah. And drought is one of the curses of God. For disobedience. God says when you're disobedient, there's going to be drought. Drought is a wake-up call. You know, you got a job and the alarm clock goes off. Well, drought is God's wake-up call for his people. And of course, famine is one of God's plagues upon a disobedient people. And they keep talking about that, right? So... Verse 11, Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And I think the rest of you know the rest of that story. So, yeah. Now, when you go live in a city, the government's going to tell you, oh, uh, you live in a residential area, you can't grow crops, you can't grow food. I remember in the, uh, what was it, the 80s in, my, in Florida, 
the Department of Agriculture trespassed on everybody's land and and chopped down everybody's orange trees. And of course, they were supposed to compensate everybody and pay everybody, but they, oh, sorry, we ran out of money. We can't pay you. Screw you, jerk off. You know, I mean, seriously, they chopped down everybody's orange trees in their in their own private property. <laughs> You'd go to work one day and you had your orange tree in the back and you come back and the next thing you know, there's a chopped down dead tree and they leave a door hanger on your door. Oh, the Florida Department of Agriculture chopped down your tree due to some, I think it was called canker or whatever. But you know what? They didn't chop down the orange groves or the big, big orange grove uh, owners, the big money, the big food people. They didn't cut down their trees. No, they just cut down the trees in people's backyards that were healthy and then didn't even bother to compensate a lot of them, most of them, I heard. You know, and then if you try to grow a garden, they'll say, oh, you, you can't grow food in your yard. That's against uh, community guidelines or whatever. During World War II, they encouraged people to grow food. They called them victory gardens. Yeah. Boy, how things have changed. You know, you're not allowed to grow uh asparagus and broccoli and cauliflower and eggplant and tomatoes in your yard, your own yard. When the government can tell you what you can and can't do with your own property, do you own it? Do you really own it? And if you've got property taxes, you really don't own your land. You don't own it. You're paying rent to the government. Oh, Chaplain Bob, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'll tell you what, big dog, quit paying your property taxes for three years and then uh, write back and tell me after the sheriff's auction, when they auction your property off, who owns that property? And if you try to stop them, they'll carry you away in a body bag. Yeah, they'll kill you. So tell me who owns your property. You don't own nothing. Yeah, just like Klaus, Klaus says, you'll own nothing and be happy or else. And you don't pay the property taxes and it's or else. So, you know, think about it. Now, the thing is, uh, your prosperity preachers on TV, you know, your full gospel, uh, what do they call them? Uh Yeah, the charismatics, you know, like, uh, what was it? Hagen and Kenyon and, uh, oh, I can't think of their names. The TBN crowd. Kenneth Copeland. Yeah, he's probably the most famous one that's alive still, you know. God's go God wants you to be rich. God wants you to be rich. Yeah, send send me a tithe and God will bless you. Uh, are these people sending tithes because they want they love the Lord or are they doing it because they're greedy and they're giving to get? I mean, that's a question for the Lord, but I suspect that's what it's all about. Now, the thing is, Abraham and Job had always put God first. That's why God had no problem making them wealthy. In the book of James, chapter 2 and verse 23, and by the way, James was a bishop of the church. He had a mother named Mary and a father named Joseph. Guess who he grew up with? Yeah, he grew up with Jesus. James 2.23 And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he, Abraham, and he was called the friend of God. How is that for a, uh, a witness, being called the friend of God? Yeah. Yeah. I, I I would like that. 
See, Abraham always put God first. God knew that money was not going to change Abraham. But rich people, and the Bible does not say anything good about uh, people that love money. Well, the Bible even says that the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money. Because they love money, not the Lord. And the Bible says that those that trust in riches, uh, well, the Bob translation says, those that trust in riches are in deep doo-doo when the time comes. Yeah. Uh, flaming doo-doo. Yeah. Someone once said that wealth comes from the ground. True wealth. I mean, let's face it. Uh, if you have cattle, you got to be able to, you know, they got to be able to have grass to eat. Um, and vegetables and fruits and nuts uh, comes from the ground, right? So let's take a look at Genesis chapter 4, verse 8. And Cain, Cain, talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. So Cain killed Abel. Everybody should know that story. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? You know, I took law in college. And I remember my law instructor said, You know, a good prosecutor or a good defense attorney will never, never, never ask a question that they don't already know the answer to. He said, Asking questions you don't know the answer to leads to all kinds of problems. So, here it is, the Lord's saying, where's Abel thy brother? I mean, he already knows the answer, you know, like you could hide anything from the Lord. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he, Cain, said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Hey, dude, I don't know. Is it, it wasn't my day to watch him. Yeah, it's kind of the Bob translation, but... Verse 10, and he said, what hast thou done? What have you done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth. Cain was cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, when you plow, when you till the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto her, unto her, uh, it will not yield unto thee her strength. You can be a farmer, you can till the, till the ground, but everything you plant, you're going to come up nothing. It's, nothing's going to grow for you. This is God's curse on Cain. And I believe all his children too, but, you know, that's just one guy's opinion. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Uh, is there a group of people that are known as the wandering uh, you-know-whos that are never, never, ever farmers? And I'm talking about getting your hands dirty, not, not buying the farms, not hiring people to run the farms. I'm talking about getting down and dirty with the hands and planting seeds and growing crops. Uh, maybe that's why they want people to... Uh, have you ever seen uh, the thing where they, uh, they're they like, oh yeah, come to uh, the land and uh, plant a tree in Israel. Plant a tree in Israel. Oh yeah. Why is that? Why do they want us to go there and plant a tree for them? You know, it's a big... They actually have a big uh, uh, what do you, campaign that does that. So, And they would be a fugitive and a vagabond. Vagabond, that's somebody that doesn't have a fixed habitation. They move around a lot. I tell you what, if you find a group of people 
that cannot grow food, that are never, ever, ever farmers, you could find out, possibly, who the children of Cain are. Hmm. Think about it. Verse 13. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Oive, oive. That behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face will I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. So, you know, keep that in mind. Now, Abraham was called the friend of God. Keep that in mind. So let's go to John chapter 15, Jesus speaking, verse 1. I am, Jesus said I am a lot. Let me tell you something. When Moses was in the desert and saw the burning bush and asked the Lord what his name was so he could tell Israel, he said, I am. And you better believe there's a connection there. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. You know, when you get a fruit tree, and you cut the branch off, instead of having one branch, you'll have two or three that'll come from the one branch. That's just how it works. So instead of bearing fruit on one branch, you uh, trim it. Now you got three or four, two, three, four branches. And in time, they'll produce even more fruit. And that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to uh, give up the things of this world and do fruit or works worthy of the kingdom. And I hope that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I really do. Verse 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Do you know the word makes us clean? Wow. Abide in, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. See, Jesus is the main branch. Well, the main, the, the trunk of the tree, so to speak, I guess. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men... And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you you continue ye in my love if oh here's that if if ye keep my commandments ye shall abide in my love even as i have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love and you know there's actually people out there that'll tell you that if you do the things that the Lord said to do that you're trying to earn your salvation. They call it Lordship Salvation. I know I've said it many times. Oh, you uh, you do the things of the Lord. Well, you're trying to earn your salvation. All you got to do is believe. Well, in James chapter 2, it says that even the devils believe in God and they tremble. Yeah, there's a big difference. You know, if ye keep my commandments, what commandments? The two commandments, 
love the Lord and love thy neighbor. On these two uh, commandments hang all the law and the prophets, Jesus said. And I'm paraphrasing. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Hmm. Well, you know, if you, if, if you do that, you're trying to earn your salvation. Idiots. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Boy, I've preached that at a number of funerals. Let me tell you something, people. Jesus laid down his life for his friends. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever I command you, but that's lordship salvation. Henceforth, I call you not servants. Hmm. Do you know the Jehovah's Witnesses will claim that their organization is the only true truth on this earth? They call them the discreet slave. They call themselves slaves to Jehovah. My King James says, friends. Would you rather be a friend or a slave? I had a friend in high school. Or, well, yeah. And he was part of the Jehovah's Witnesses. He lived a Jehovah's Witness and he died a Jehovah's Witness. And I remember him telling me, Oh, the world's going to end in 75, 76. It's going to end. Jesus is coming back. The JWs, you know, they know it because God revealed it to them. Well, guess what? We're still here. Jesus didn't come back. And that is the definition of a false prophet. And guess what? Did he leave the JWs? No, no, no. Bible tells you, get away from the false prophets. Get away from them. Don't listen to them. He didn't leave. He stayed with them. They got new light from the angel of light. Yeah, they're the discreet slaves. That's what their Bible says, slaves. I don't want to be a slave. I'd rather be a servant and a friend. I'd rather be, much rather. Verse 14, Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants. I don't call you servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. You know, the, the servants don't know what their master's doing. You know, he just tells them, oh, go do this. Uh, why? You don't ask why. You just go ahead and, and do it. But a friend, you'd say, oh, yeah, I want you to go uh, gather up the corn because we're going to sell it at the market. You know, a servant, you're just going to tell him, go get some corn. Go get the corn. Go pick it. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Do you know that there's people tell you that this is a false doctrine? Ooh, that's Calvinism. Ooh, Election and, and chosen people. and Oh, no, 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 no. It's just whosoever believeth is going to be saved if they believe. They just got to believe. Yeah, but Jesus says we got to do what he says. You know, he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things I say? 
And that's in the book of Luke, chapter 6 and verse 46. Jesus says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? You know, I mean, you're going to call him Lord and you're not going to do what he says? I mean, really? Really? So let's go back to John 15 and verse 16. Jesus says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Who made the choice? Jesus made the choice. Jesus made the choice. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own, but because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Well, unless, of course, you're a pre-tribber. Oh, Jesus can get nailed to a cross, but God would never do that to his church. He's not a wife beater. We're going to be flying out of here in the pre-trib rapture. We're not going to have to die for our faith. God would never do that to us. I've heard that. They're idiots, they're liars, they're deceivers, whether intentionally or unintentionally. They don't know anything. Every pre-tribber teacher is going to be proven to be a false prophet when the time comes. Every single one of them. Just like the Jehovah's Witnesses. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Did the world hate Billy Graham? No, the world loved Billy Graham. Every president, in my memory, invited Billy Graham to the White House. And they'd put their arm around him. Oh, Billy Graham, you're great. Yeah, we love you. Why? Because he didn't preach... He didn't preach Jesus. He preached a uh, God loves everybody garbage. Verse 20. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. They're going to take your words and turn them against you, just like they did with Jesus. Oh, yeah, uh, Jesus, uh, is it lawful for us to pay taxes to Caesar? You know, trying to trick him. Jesus said, show me the penny. Whose picture is on this penny? Uh, Caesar's? Well, then give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and give to the God the things that are God's. And boy, I'll tell you what, they marveled. Uh, you know, they got to the point where they wouldn't ask Jesus questions anymore. <laughs> so don't ask Jesus a question that you don't. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're trying to trick Jesus, but he tricks you. Yeah. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If. I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. They have no covering for their sin. He that hateth me, hateth my father also. You ever hear people say, well, you know, the you-know-whos don't, they don't have Jesus, but they got the father. But that's not what Jesus said. You know, I believe cheese, Christians are God's chosen people. Plain and simple, I think we are God's chosen people. But you go to a church, so-called, and they'll tell you that the people that reject Jesus are his chosen people. 
He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had none, not done among them the works, the miracles, if I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Yes, some of the prophets did some of the miracles that Jesus did. But no single person did all the miracles that Jesus did. Jesus gave sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, speech to the dumb, unable to speak. Uh, to the lame, they were able to walk. He cured people of leprosy. He cast devils out of people, demon possession. And he even raised the dead. And I probably, I'm just covering the start. But still they didn't believe him. They could do all the miracles, and they still didn't believe him. And let me tell you something, people. The false prophet, when he appears on the scene, he's going to probably call himself Elijah. He's going to do the same kind of miracles as Elijah, bringing fire from the sky to devour his enemy, those that oppose him. And at every Passover, the you-know-whos will set a plate, they say, for is for Elijah. Because they're expecting him to come. They don't believe that, uh, well, yeah, they reject Jesus. They're looking for another. And this false prophet is going to be able to do miracle after miracle after miracle. And people are going to fall for it. Because God blinds their eyes. All right, so if I had done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin, but now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, that's the Holy Spirit, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. You ever been to a Pentecostal church and they, oh, the Holy Spirit, uh, speaking in tongues, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. You know, no, no. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit will always testify of Jesus, will always point you to Jesus. So all these tongue talkers, I, it makes you wonder. The Bible even says that uh, people that speak in an unknown tongue, if it be in the church, let them, you know, to, let them by two or three. And if there's uh, no interpreter, let them be silent. If there's no interpreter, let them be silent. And uh, there was one guy, he was a, um, I forget what he, uh, I, I forget what denomination he was, but he spoke uh, Greek. And he went to a Pentecostal church, and they claimed to have an interpreter. And he started speaking words of the New Testament in Greek. And they gave a wrong interpretation. Let me tell you something, that is not of God. That is not of God. It's more like the devil. So, but when the Comforter is come, whom I shall send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye, shall, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. So, is money evil in and of itself? No. Absolutely not. But if you put money before the Lord, you got a problem. And that's what a lot of rich people, they, they want money, they don't want the Lord. They don't want him. But I think this whole Bitcoin and all this cryptocurrency thing is a scam to get everybody thinking, uh, oh, we can get away from government control and 
uh, you know, we can get rich with Bitcoin and the, they can't control it. You know, what happens if the electric goes out? What, what good is your Bitcoin going to do? Wealth was gold, silver, land, and cattle, and livestock. That is wealth. And the government tells you, oh, well, you, you your property, you can't do, you can't have, uh, you know, you can't have uh, uh, fruit and vegetables growing in your yard. Nope. You can't put livestock. Nope. Uh, you got to be in a certain area to do that. And we can tell you how much you can sell your food for. And we can tell you how much your taxes are. They can destroy you in many different ways. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So think about it. They're getting everybody ready for uh, 666, which is going to happen probably. It's going to happen. Whether it happens in my lifetime or not, I don't know. I'll be honest. I don't know. But it's sure looking like it, isn't it? With the advent of computers, they now have the ability to track everything. And they got chips now that can tie into the computers. And what would happen if they took a chip for the right hand or in the forehead that was, they had your government identity on it, your government ID, and all your banking information? Wouldn't that fulfill 666? I think it would. Am I saying it absolutely is 666? No. But I do believe in 1990 or 91 that that was what the Lord showed me. Uh, I was reading through the Bible for the first time in my life from front to end, from Genesis 1, to, and I got the Revelation, and I read the you know, Mark of the Beast, and I asked the Lord, what is this mark of the beast, Lord? And next morning in the newspaper, there was an article about a dog being microchipped by a you know who veterinarian. And uh, how great it is. Yeah, we can chip your dog. And if your dog escapes and gets lost, we can scan the chip at the dog pound and, and reunite your dog with their owners and we can you know with all the rabies shots and you know all the other stuff and then it was like hey we can do this to children and they're already chipping um uh important business people so-called important in their eyes and uh uh politicians and uh You know, embassy workers, ambassadors, and what have you, you know, they're they're actually chipping these people, but you don't hear about it anymore. I did years ago. I was reading about how they can chip them. So even if you kidnap these people, they can track them, you know. And that was years ago. I can only imagine what they have now. So, you know, it, it makes you wonder, really. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And let me tell you something. Every time you double the paper money supply, every time you print double the amount of money, the value of the money drops by one half. Think about it. Think about it. Every time you double the money supply, the value of the money is half. And I was reading it takes about six months for it to show up. And of course, when you control the money, uh, when the printing press, you know, you can buy up all the farms. You can buy up all the news companies, the newspapers, the TV stations, the radio stations, all the publishers, you know, so you can teach your kids about CRT and, you know, uh, you can buy up all the church publishers. Yeah. Yeah. Then you could print NIV Bibles and turn Jesus into Lucifer. Yeah, the NIV turns Jesus into Lucifer. Believe it or not, he does. And people, and people will argue and say, oh, you're one of those King James only people. Well, yeah, my Bible says Lucifer is Lucifer and Jesus is Jesus. But if you want to use a Bible that tells you that Jesus is the morning star in, who in, in Revelation 22, and then on Isaiah 14, the morning star fell from heaven and is going to the pit of hell. Uh, 
well, you can do that if you want. I'm going to pass on that. And uh, But I hope you have an answer for the Lord, uh, possibly at the white throne judgment, which is the one where they get thrown into the lake of fire. I, you know, when you argue that it's perfectly proper to, to call Jesus, uh, Lucifer, a name of Jesus, you better be prepared to, yeah. You could do a fancy song and dance, but tap dance, but I don't think it's going to cut it. They have bought up farmland. They have bought up everything of value by just printing money, printing money, printing money. I read an article a couple of years ago that England, the United Kingdom, was paying interest on bonds, war bonds, from World War I. You're talking over 100 years ago. They're still paying interest on these bonds. They never paid them off. They're still paying interest on these war bonds. A hundred years later. Yeah, think about it. And by the way, a pound, a pound, which was their official currency, was a pound of sterling silver. That's why they called it a pound sterling. A pound of sterling silver was uh, 12 troy ounces of silver. So 12 times, uh, it would be like $250 for a pound sterling. Does a pound of uh, a British pound, could you buy, uh, could you exchange that for a pound of sterling silver now? No. No, it's as worthless as the dollar. And eventually, when they print so much money that the money is worthless anymore, the economy will collapse. The Great Reset. You'll own nothing and be happy. Oh, you can't pay your property taxes? Sorry, we'll take it from you. Uh, oh, but we got this little apartment in the city that you can live in. Uh, no, you can't grow any food there. That's against the rules. So, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I hope you're happy in your multicultural community. Oh, your neighbors uh, play the ghetto blaster all night and all day. And uh, Well, sorry. You know, that's not our problem. Oh, you, their, kids, uh, their kids beat up your kid and threw him down the stairs. Oh, well, that's your, uh, you're just being racist. Yeah, that's your uh, white uh, privilege. Yeah, you know. Yep, when you control the money, you can print the money and buy everything of value. They bought up all the uh, agricultural areas. They bought up all the... Uh, they have properties set aside for businesses, the commercial properties. Every time I drive by commercial properties here and it says for rent, it has a you-know-who name with the phone number. And boy, I'll tell you what. It costs thousands of dollars every month to rent a property to have to house a business in. Boy, you got if you want a restaurant and you're paying a couple thousand dollars a month for rent, that's a whole lot of dinners to be selling. Yeah. You know, it's a game, people, and you're playing Monopoly, and they own the bank. Yeah. Yeah, it's... it's. I got to admit, the plans... The, you know, I'm glad I took economics in uh, business college. It, it, it all makes sense. And by the way, um, the federal... Second word is reserve, and the third world is bank. Uh, if you look at a dollar bill, it, it'll actually say federal blah, 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 notes, note. Um, it's a private bank. Yeah, believe it or not, it is. They let us borrow our own money with interest. Isn't that nice of them? They let us borrow our own money with interest. 
And uh, their own books tell you that it's a private bank, and they got shareholders. And it was chartered by Congress. Um, Woodrow Wilson was president, I think it was like 1913, if I remember correctly. Pretty much everybody had gone home for Christmas, and they called a special session of Congress and passed this thing. Of course, they wanted everybody to think it's a branch of the government, but it's not. And they just have money printed. I read that since uh, the last two or three years, that 80% of all the money that's been printed, that's in circulation, has been printed in the last two or three or so years. So that's why we're seeing what they call inflation. Inflation is not the value of the goods, the price of goods going up. It's the value of the currency going down. You, you, so, you know, you bought an item three years ago for $2. Now it costs 4 It's because the currency's value is less. The, the price of goods doesn't go up. Uh, if we had gold and silver coins, you could have inflation, but that would be, you know, if you had a uh, crop failures or something, you know, then the price could go up. But when you got paper money, the value is going down. And they will, eventually it'll crash. They'll have the reset and then probably go to digital currency, 666. Will it happen in our lifetime? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a, I don't claim to be a prophet, unlike those on TBN. You know, it's supernatural. Ugh. I'm just a servant, and I hope one day I'll be called a friend. So, what can I tell you? And the Lord is, reveals things to his servants. So, I hope, uh, just remember, wealth comes from the ground. And if you don't have a garden, I suggest you start one. Um, for those of you that don't know it, there's a company called Haas Tools, H-O-S-S -S, Tools.com. They're in Norman, Georgia. They've got reasonable prices. They have sales too. And um, very good service. Very good service. Fast shipping. I mean, if I order something on a Monday, it's in my hands by Thursday or Wednesday, Thursday. I mean, they ship it quick. And uh, I planted some of their seeds and they work. And I would, I would wrap the seeds in foil uh, just so that uh, the G Wiz number five uh, doesn't microwave cook them. That's my suggestion. But uh, yeah, if you order $100, shipping is free and they send it priority, insured. Uh, I mean, it's, trust me, they're, I like them. And their prices are reasonable. I think they're reasonable. They have pretty much anything you need. Oh, and they got a YouTube channel too where they teach you uh, about growing stuff. So I would definitely consider that because um, I think it was Henry Kissinger that said uh, oh I'll have to look it up yeah Henry said control oil and you control nations control food and you control the people control the banks and you control the world yeah and I think Henry knew what he was talking about. He also said something else. He said, today America would be outraged if UN, United Nations troops, entered LA to restore order. Tomorrow, they will be grateful. This is especially true if they were told that there were an outside threat from beyond. Whether real or promulgated that threaten our very existence. It is then that all peoples of the world will plead to deliver them from this evil. The one thing every man
fears is the unknown. When presented with this scenario, individual rights will be willingly relinquished for the guarantee of their well-being granted to them by the world government. Yeah. And, uh, and one of my favorite quotes, and I was, I'm ex-army, by the way. Henry says, military men are just dumb, stupid animals. Military men are just dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns in foreign policy. Yeah. Yeah, think about all the wars we've been in. So, yep, think about it, people. I got to admit, the plan is brilliant. Their plan is absolutely brilliant. But guess what? They're only going to go as far as the Lord allows them to go. So, we will see what happens. I hope you learned something, you know, I know I'm long winded, but, but, uh, yeah, they're going to crash things and try to go to electronic currency. And if you think the wrong thing or say the wrong thing on uh, fascist book or whatever, or twits, you know, or, uh, whatever, well, they'll press a few buttons and, oh, sorry, you don't get any money. Look at what happened to the um, uh, the Canadian truckers that were protesting. They cut off their, uh, they had the banks cut off their money. How's the government able to get the banks to do that? Oh, that's right. They work together. They're the same entity, basically. Yeah. You give money to the wrong people. Do you know the people that, uh, donated money to Kyle Rittenhouse, you know, the kid that, uh, the Kenosha kid, Kenosha, Wisconsin, during the Antifa thing, uh, donated money for his legal defense. Do you know that people were fired from their jobs? Now, if you donate money, the bank had to have looked up who these people were and then found out where they worked and then told their jobs told their place of employment there was a cop that got fired from his uh job because he donated money to kyle's defense so the bank had to have known well the bank knew that he donated the money but then the bank investigated where the guy works and then told his his employer and the employer fired him well kyle was found not guilty by a jury Imagine that for every item you buy. Oh, wait a minute. You can't buy meat. Meat causes uh, climate change. We can't have cows farting. I mean, seriously. Oh, and, and you said the wrong thing yesterday. So we're cutting off your money for 72 hours. You can't buy nothing. I mean, seriously. This is what it's getting to. You know, you, you, I really, and where does a bank get off telling the police department that this cop donated $25 to Kyle Rittenhouse's legal defense? Where do they get off doing this? I mean, seriously, people have no idea. And if you think, oh, well, I'm not going to have, keep my money in the bank. I'm going to keep cash. Well, guess what? They got a thing called civil forfeiture. They passed it under Reagan. They don't even have to charge you with a crime. They find cash on you, they can take it and say, well, we suspect this is drug money or, or illegal, whatever. And you have to hire a lawyer to file a lawsuit to get your money back and get a judge that works for the state to agree to give you your money back. And you, you haven't even been charged with a crime. You're not convicted of a crime. They just took it. The police have been doing this for years. And how do you hire a lawyer when they take your money? How? Pretty hard to do, huh? 
Yeah, people, it's uh, it's here. It's here. And, you know, I'm probably one of the few people that read the business section of the newspapers. Or, well, we used to have newspapers. Now it's, you know, online. But I read, I read the, uh, I do a lot of research. A lot. And this is how I find out all this stuff. Because I turn my TV off most of the time. Sometimes I'll turn it on just to do see where they're leading us. But uh, yeah, that's why I don't put out a Bible study every day because I'm doing, you know, I'm posting stuff and researching and people send me articles and thank you to those that do. Um, trying to find stuff to warn everybody. So you got your money in the bank? It's not safe. You got cash in hand? That's not safe either. Nothing, you know, nothing safe. How can you take money from people that are not even charged with a crime? I mean, seriously. You know, these people are, they're devil's kids. They're devil's kids. And if you want to know who Cain's kids are, find out a group of people that can never grow food. What kind of, what kind of jobs would they have to have if they couldn't grow, you know, they couldn't do agriculture? Well, they'd have to be uh, merchants. You know, sell things. They'd have to be in insurance and banking, and uh, yeah, you know, you, lawyers, doctors. Yeah, you know, those are the kind of jobs you'd have to have. Nothing to do with agriculture. So, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. And let me tell you something, people. Hot, rough times are coming. Absolutely. Rough times are coming. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.